everybody. Welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. This is Sean Spicer, Head of Marketing over here at Agile IT. Today I'm being joined by David Branscombe, uh, Microsoft Partner Technical Architect, uh, who will be talking about some things that you didn't know you could do in Teams. Uh, today we're also being joined by Kristen San Ramon, who is our resident productivity specialist, uh, who helps finding those opportunities in digital transformation. Uh, good morning to both of you. Um, first off, let me just uh, give um, Kristen a chance here to say hello and who she is. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen San Ramon. As Sean said, I'm the cloud productivity specialist here at Agile IT. Um, so I'll be that person uh, that will be helping customers understand more about how they can modernize their workplace and, you know, if you're not really sure what to do in Teams and how you can best utilize it for um, for your for your company, you know, I'd be that person, that go-to person to help you figure out that roadmap. Great. And Kristen also does work directly with the uh, partner technical architects over there at Microsoft, uh, including David. But we've got a full team there that's helping us out. And then David Branscombe, you know before from some of our earlier tech talks, he was the one who did that excellent one uh, for uh, compliance and teams, which I think was the first one you did with us, David. Um, how are you doing? Why don't you tell us a little bit about you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. I am uh, a partner technical architect with um, the Modern Workplace Group. Uh, specialize in teams and security. Um, been uh, working at Microsoft for ten and a half years, and uh, love working with partners like you guys. Great. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pass presenter over to you, and we can get started. Okay. All right. See everything great there, David. All right. Good. So I'm going to show you a couple things today that uh, hopefully are new to you. Uh, they're, they're, they're kind of neat for doing a demo of Teams. Um, and uh, I'll show you how uh, to perform them. And then I'll, I'll, I'll actually perform the, the demo for you so you uh, see what it looks like in real life. So first thing is um, sharing your phone in Teams. So did you know that you can share your, your phone um, in a Teams meeting? <clears throat> so the basic idea behind it is, uh, you know, you ask the question, you know, why would I do this? Why would I, why would I want to share my phone? And the answer is, uh, let's say you're a help desk person and someone's having a, a, an issue with their phone. Um, you can set up a quick meeting with them on Teams and they could walk through the process of sharing their phone. And uh, you could see exactly what's happening on their screen uh, without having to try to explain it to them. Um, uh, we, without any visibility into what they're doing. Uh, the other option or, or, or scenario is, uh, let's say you're traveling and you need to join a Teams meeting <clears throat> and share a document and all you've got open and, and running is your phone. You have the option to uh, share that document right from your phone. So the basic idea behind it is you would set up Teams on your mobile device. Um, when you join the, the meeting, you'll get this, uh, this notification up in the top part of your um, uh, Teams client that says join the meeting to share content from this device. So you click on join and then if you're using an iPhone uh, like I am, you would swipe up from the bottom and you'd select the share icon. When you uh, select share, you get an option of how you want to share it and you select share screen. And then you'll get um, uh, this notification that says to broadcast Microsoft Teams. So you swipe up to get the control center. You press on the record button. Uh, you select Microsoft Teams and tap on the broadcast icon. So it looks roughly like this when you uh, bring it up from the, from the bottom. You'll press on this button down here. <clears throat> and you'll get a, uh, uh, a window that looks sort of like this. Um, you'll make sure that Microsoft Teams is selected and click on Start Broadcast. And then from there, in the Teams meeting, your phone's display will be shown. And then whenever you need to stop the broadcast, uh, you'll have a, a red bar up here along the top uh, that you click on and that'll allow you to stop the broadcast. <clears throat> Again, I'll, I'll show you this as soon as I'm done with uh, some of these uh, the, the slides I'm showing. So that's the first one, sharing your phone. The next one is the translate feature in Teams. <clears throat> so this one, uh, there are 
uh, uh, ways that you can turn on uh, translation. Uh, one way is by doing uh, this PowerShell commandlet. <clears throat> it allows you to uh, define a global policy, a messaging policy that uh, allows users to use the translation feature, right? You just uh, click allow user translation uh, true, <clears throat> or probably the easier way to do it is go to the Teams admin center, select a messaging policy, and uh, go down here to allow users to translate messages and turn that uh, uh, lever on. So what does that look like? <clears throat> Let's say uh, somebody sends a message to you in a different language. Um, and in this case, uh, I've, I've sent a message in Danish. I speak Danish. And so um, on the right-hand side uh, of the message, you have an ellipsis. You click on the ellipsis and go to translate. And the message will be translated, as we see here. So the message was translated into English. And I can go back to that same button, uh, to, to, to the same ellipsis, and it will say, uh, see original message, and it will translate it back to the original language. <clears throat> so I'll show you that. And then the third um, thing that I think is, is a pretty cool demo is the immersive reader in Teams. So um, again, uh, when you get a message, uh, I didn't have the, the thing turned on right here, but um, if you, you, you get a message here, so this is the same one that I showed before. You click on the ellipsis in the right-hand side. Uh, you select Immersive Reader, and you click the Play button, and the message will be read back to you. There are some controls within the Immersive Reader that are also pretty interesting. So you can define picture dictionary. You can define what language you want to translate into and whether you want to translate by an individual word or the whole uh, phrase, the whole document. So for example, in this case, uh, there's a couple other things that, that are in play here for with these different colors. Um, when, when we get over to, to these little buttons, I'll show you what I mean. So these are showing nouns uh, in the purple, and then uh, the, the red are showing verbs, uh, but you can also show uh, uh, adverbs, adjectives, and stuff like that, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, but you see uh, that this is in English, <clears throat> but then if I translate it, it translates it into Danish using all the proper, uh, you know, vowels and, and you know, the, 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 the sig uh, uh, unique symbols that they use in that language. So that's pretty neat, but you can take it a step further. You can translate individual words in a chat. So in this case, I selected the word rivers. It translated from the English into Danish. And it also gives me this picture dictionary, a picture of what a river is, right? So uh, imagine that, that you're working with uh, ch children and um, they, they, they want uh, uh, to be able to translate into different languages and maybe they don't understand particular words. Uh, you have that picture dictionary available to them. So you could take that entire, Sorry? I just said very cool. Yeah, you know, it is pretty cool. So I have this uh, phrase, I like to look at lakes, rivers, and ponds, and I'm translating, um, well, I'm not doing any translation here, but it's, it's doing the uh, picture dictionary for each of those uh, features. So let's show how this actually works. <clears throat> so for the first one, I am here in a Teams meeting. And what I'm going to do is share my phone. So as I mentioned, I am going to go onto my phone. And uh, in my Teams client, I have the option to join this Teams meeting that Sean is also in. I click on Join. I click on the ellipsis. I click Share. Share my screen. I swipe up and oh, tap geez. Start Broadcast. You need to slow down a bit there, yeah, David. Like, uh, the screen's not updating yet. No, it, it's not going to until you actually see the phone. Oh, there we go. I see it here. So, so now you see my phone, and you see exactly what's going on on my phone, and you can see everything that I'm doing. You see all the apps that I have, and if I want to open an app or something, open my Kindle. 
right? Whatever I do, it's showing perfectly in uh, Teams. And so you're able to uh, kind of walk through uh, scenarios with people and uh, they're able to, to follow along with you, whatever you're doing. <clears throat> so it's a good, uh, good tool for using, um, you know, for troubleshooting or, or walking people through how to use something for the first time. Uh, you notice up at the top, there's a red bar. If I click on that red bar, I get the option here to stop the broadcast, and that will take my phone out of broadcast mode, and now uh, it's just the regular team. Yeah, you know, one use case uh, that we right. bring up earlier there, David, is uh, for a while I was working at a software company where we did make mobile apps, and it was always a battle between iOS and Android to figure out how to actually demonstrate our software to clients remotely. Um, so we were always buying extra third-party software. Uh, so I see that as really valuable uh, for both sales and uh, technical teams to demonstrate uh, their own mobile apps. So that's great. Exactly, exactly, and 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 even within Microsoft, uh, for for many years, we, we've had the option of using Air Server as a way to demonstrate um, uh, Android or or iOS mobile apps. Um, yep. Now we can just use Teams to do it. <clears throat> All right. Now the next uh, couple of demos I will do here within my. Uh, keep in mind, this is the web app client, right? So so this is available. Uh, the, these features are available in the web app client. Uh, I'm not in the full client for these specific demos. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing I showed you was the translation feature. So again, I'll uh, type something here in Danish. And I think I may have misspelled the one of those words, so it might have problems uh, translating it, but let's try. <clears throat> Oh, it got it. Okay, so what are we going to do today? I translate it that way, and then I can translate it back into English. What I can do now is go to Immersive Reader. And while you won't be able to hear it, uh, you'll, be able, you'll be able to see what it's doing. Um, because the audio is coming through my speakers, it's not coming through the, uh, uh, the meeting itself. <clears throat> so... Um, if I click on this, this little button down here, it will actually play the audio of uh, these statements uh, and, and it'll say it in Danish. Now, if I go over here, I have some options as far as what I see in the immersive reader. So I can change the text size. I can change the, uh, the font that's being used if I want to uh, monkey around with that. I can change the color background. You know, just uh, some some personal customizations, but then here is where you start to get some interesting things. So um, right now I'm highlighting nouns and verbs, but I can also highlight adjectives. There's none none in these sentences and uh, none in the adverbs. Of course, it's in Danish too, so it may not be able to recognize the, the part just speech. Uh, although it did find it, it may be basing this on the English um, uh, translation. Um, I can also indicate the syllables. So again, for, for students, this might be useful, uh, understanding the concept of syllables. And then if I go to the immersive reader itself, um, let me go back and translate back to English. And back to immersive reader. So if I go back here, um, I've got the picture dictionary turned on and I can translate into a number of different languages. So we can translate into Arabic, and I'll translate the entire document. So it translates into Arabic, translate it into simplified Chinese. And of course, some things don't translate directly. Um, and then I can translate individual words. So if I wanna translate uh, going into Danish, just highlight the word going, and it gives me <clears throat> the, uh, the Danish translation and some ideas in the picture dictionary of what going means. So really very useful from an educational perspective, uh, especially with young children, if, if you're helping to uh, teach them concepts around uh, translation and uh, different languages, um, this can be a, a really fun tool. 
Um, and I think that was all I was going to demo for now. Um, what do you think? That's great. Um, I'm particularly excited about the ability to share your mobile device. Um, and I'm definitely going to give that a try with a tablet um, where I can possibly do a presentation from you know, our flex room or our break room uh, without having a full device in front of me. Um, would also be super handy where I do have my Surface as well as the tablet where I could do a PowerPoint into a Teams while still working with my files on the Surface. So yeah, that gives you that, that uh, multiple opportunities and multiple surfaces of work. So that's great. Um, yeah. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, the technology that's underlying this translation feature, right? So um, this translation feature is also going to be available or, you know, is available um, with live events. So live events can be translated into other languages. Um, and, and be transcribed into uh, text so people can read what's taking place during the live event. It's the same technology. So uh, you see you know, the, the, the nice quality of the translation. Um, the same thing can be done in, in a live event where you may be broadcasting to thousands of people for, for some reason. Great. Yeah, and I've seen some demos of that, uh, particularly at Inspire last year, when the, those features were still in preview. So super exciting, and I'm really happy to see where Teams is going. It's a great tool here at Agile IT. Um, well, David, I understand that you do have to break for another meeting. I appreciate your attendance very much. Uh, the Q&A period this time will be uh, taken by myself and Kristen. Uh, and if there are any questions that we can't handle, we'll uh, reach out to you, David, or somebody else there on the technical architect team. Uh, just always a pleasure to have you, David. Thank you very much, and you have a great day. Mm -hmm.